scholars, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to go over a problem where we're finding the centroid of a composite shape. Now a composite shape is just something that's made up of two or more boxes or triangles or something. It's, it's not an individual box. So what I've imagined here is an L cut out of a big, thick, uniform plate. It's uniform, so it's the same everywhere. And the problem I gave my students was, you know, it's a pretty good sized plate here. Let's imagine that an artist is trying to hang this from a pivot right there so that the bottom is horizontal and the side is vertical. So all the dimensions are there except for L, that uh, distance of that, you know, the bottom of the L here. And we have to find L so that the, the, this uh, shape hangs like the artist intended. Now this is different than uh, the average centroid locate, or centroid homework problem because the average problem, somebody like me, gives you all the geometry and asks you to find the location of the centroid. In this one, I'm giving you the location of the centroid and asking you to find part of the geometry. Now, it, the equations are exactly the same. We just solve them in a slightly different way. So let's start here. Let's start with the equation that describes the location of the x centroid only. Now, I'm going to need an origin, so I'm going to use that dot right there as the origin. And you can see I've got my x-axis there, and I meant to put that there. So there's y, and I'm going to get rid of that just to give us some room here. Actually, while I'm at it, let me, let me, we already know what we're finding, so let me get rid of that, clean that drawing up just a little bit, okay? So the equation we're going to use for x bar only is this. So why do I only need x bar? I don't care what y bar is. Well, all that I need to know is that the centroid is right below that pin. If the, pin, the centroid lies right below the pin, this structure will hang either vertically or horizontally, depending on how you want to write it. So let me put a, a dotted line here. There. The centroid has to lie along that. So I already know that if, if that's my origin, x bar has to be one meter. So let's write this all out. Now to do that, I need to uh, uh, divide this up into boxes. Well, we've already got that dotted line there. Let's just use that. I'm going to put the division right there. So I've divided my composite shape into two smaller shapes, subshapes, or whatever you want to call those. And I'll number this as number one, and I'll number this one as number two. It doesn't matter how you, how do you number them. So let's go up here. Let's expand this out now. So x bar is a1 x1 plus a2 x2 over a1 plus a2. Okay, where. A1 and A2, those are the areas of box 1 and box 2. And X1 and X2 are the X centroid locations of these two boxes. Well, I don't actually know what that is. Is that a problem? No. Okay, so here's the centroid location. Right there. And that's 0 0.5 meters. Again, I don't care where it is vertical. It happens to be 3.5, but it doesn't matter here. Centroid location here is L over 2 from that end. Well, that's not the location I need. I need it from the origin. So let's, let's get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. So from there to there is 1 plus L over 2. Oh, that's a terrible L. Let me see if I can fix that. Yeah, that's better. So that's 1 plus L over 2 right there. And I don't know what L is. We'll figure that out. But let's just go ahead and, and, and plug everything in here. So A1 is 7 times 1. So it's 7 meters squared A1 times X1. X1 is 0 0.5 meters. So far, so good. A2, well, the area is 1 meter times L. So it's 1 meter times L, and its distance is 1 plus L over 2. And I 
got to keep my units here, one meter plus L over two. All right, so I've got that. So I've got A1, A2, X1, X2. And A1 is seven meters squared. And A2 is L, well, one times, one meter times L. Now the reason I'm not putting units on L is that that'll, that'll drop out automatically here. Now, what about X bar? Well, I know what that is. One, if I uh, use that as my origin, that's one meter, isn't it? Okay, well, let's expand this out. There we go. I've multiplied through over there. Actually, I can expand this out a little bit. That's 3.5 meters cubed. Now, meters cubed, it's not a volume. It's an area times a distance, even though it looks like it's got the units of volume. Um, so there's that, plus one meter times L, one meter plus L over two. Now let's take one more step here. Let's say, expand all this out one more time. We'll unpack it just a little more. Okay, so we got that with the, with the terrible equal sign. Let me see if we can fix that. Okay, let's, let's subtract that from both sides. So I'm going to get 3.5 meters cubed equals 1 meter times L squared over 2. When you work all that out, you get L equals the square root of 7 meters. And that turns out to be, let me look at my little board here, 2.646, pretty much. There. That means if that number is 2.646 meters, then this is going to hang either, that, that edge is horizontal and that edge is vertical, just like the artist intended. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.